Now, I've done several videos related to why someone might have a loss of smell, the underlying cause, whether it's related to a virus or some other cause. I have some new information I want to share with you on restoring your sense of smell. Now, in some recent research that I've been looking at, there's some interesting data on insulin. Insulin is needed to repair the olfactory neurons, okay? Now, what you need to know is the olfactory neurons have everything to do with your receptors for smell, which, if damaged, can majorly affect your ability to taste by, like, a factor of 80%. So, if you can't smell, you're not going to be able to taste too well. And the interesting data about this, which I'll put a link down below, is this. The highest density and the highest concentration of insulin receptors in the brain are in the olfactory region of the brain, okay? Now, this probably relates to the link between insulin and the storage of food, like fat, and smell and taste related to appetite. And so insulin has a huge role in the recovery of neurons after an injury, okay? So it, it has everything to do with regenerating the olfactory neurons. And so if there is not enough insulin available, um, you're going to have a hard time recovering from any type of injury to these neurons. And this is why a diabetic and a pre-diabetic are hit a lot harder with the sense of smell after damaging those neurons than someone that doesn't have a problem with insulin. I mean, if you even think about diabetics, they also have a problem with uh, losing their eyesight, right? Well, they can also lose their sense of smell. Now, you might be saying, well, I'm not a diabetic. I'm not pre-diabetic. Well, chances are you may have insulin resistance, which is a lot more common. In fact, probably 70% of the population has insulin resistance, which means you may have an insulin deficiency on certain parts of your body, as well as an insulin excess. But as far as the neurons in the olfactory area in your sinuses, chances are you could be very deficient in insulin if you have insulin resistance. So then I started doing research on intranasal insulin spray, okay? I wanted to know if there's any relationship between spraying insulin into the sinuses directly affecting the olfactory bulb, which is in your sinuses, and to see if there's any um, improvement in smell. And sure enough, with just 40 units spraying up into your sinuses, there was an immediate improvement in the sense of smell and smell differentiation between different odors. There's many different things you can do with a loss of smell. You can start taking zinc. There are certain types of essential oils that give off certain scents that you can retrain your, your olfactory neurons. But restoring insulin resistance so you have enough insulin to help repair these neurons I think is going to be probably the most important thing to do. Now, I've done a ton of videos on insulin resistance, as you may know already if you're on my channel. But if you haven't watched my videos, I think this is going to be very important for you to know. Or if you just want to improve your sense of smell. Number one, you have to go on a low-carb diet. Number two, intermittent fasting is a must, okay? At least fasting of 18 hours. And if you're new to my channel, I put a link down below of how to do this correctly. Apple cider vinegar before bed, like two tablespoons and some water, would be very, very beneficial to help with insulin resistance. Any type of exercise, regular exercise, is going to help you with insulin resistance. Vitamin D, at least 10,000 IUs per day, uh, can help you with insulin resistance. Enough potassium, either in a supplement or potassium foods, is going to be very important in restoring insulin resistance. And enough vitamin B1 can also help. And so the more you improve insulin resistance, the more you're going to have normal insulin, the more you're going to have the ability to restore these neurons if they're damaged. All right, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types, 
Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.